Good morning. Happy Tuesday. It's good to see you again. Yesterday we talked about integrity. We talked about how you and I are blessed to be able to stand up uh, as beloved children of God in any circumstance we find ourselves in. Uh, and we can stand up nobly and honorably because, because we speak truth. Because God has made us equal with the voice empowered to point to the reality of the kingdom of God. So, Peter has this opportunity today. We'll pick up. Um, Jesus has been led from Ananias' house to Caiaphas' house. And he's been taken in the dungeon. Some of you have been in that dungeon with me uh, when we've gone to Jerusalem. If you haven't traveled with me to the Holy Land, I hope you do sometime anyway. We'll read on. Verse 25, chapter 18. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself there in the courthouse at Caiaphas' yard. And they asked him, Are you not also one of his disciples? Peter denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter cut off, asked, Did you not see, did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. We don't see Jesus or Peter again until uh, Jesus' uh, word of his res resurrection spreads from Mary. Um, he, uh, he, denied, he denied Jesus to save himself. And it's what Jesus had predicted. There's something about Peter's extraordinary power and competence that Jesus loved. It was Peter upon whom Jesus built the church. Uh, Peter had a charism uh, that was compelling, and yet, before the resurrection happened, Peter uh, was all about Peter. He was all about himself. And, uh, and Jesus understood that, and he knew that he wouldn't be able to stand up for Jesus when the time came. And, and here's the thing. Jesus didn't need Peter to stand up for him. Peter needed to stand up for Jesus. Jesus didn't need it. Peter needed it. Peter needed to honor his own integrity and his own truth. And he did not do that. Jesus doesn't need us. Right? Jesus, we need Jesus. But we need, the way we represent how we need Jesus is by standing up for him by owning who he is, by owning how he is in each one of our individual lives. That's the failing of Peter here. And I pray it's not our failing. That we're able in that moment of opportunity to say, this is who I am. I'm a follower of Jesus. Because I'm a follower of Jesus, I live a particular way, with integrity and with truth. We'll read on. Verse 28. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat Passover. So the next day was the Passover, the meal that they were anticipating on that Saturday. It was Friday. Uh, they take Jesus to Pilate. So and Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered, if this man were not a criminal, would we have handed him over to you? Pilate said to them, Take him himself and, and judge him according to your laws. And the Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death that he would have. Now what they're saying is, uh, we're bringing him to you uh, because he is undermining Roman authority. It is not within our jurisdiction to deal with him. It is within your jurisdiction and we are giving him to you and you will then Put him to death. And Pilate, verse 33, then Pilate entered the headquarters again and he summoned Jesus and he asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? And Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? And this is not my issue, is it? Your own nation and your chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered him, I love this. Jesus says, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers 
would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews, but as it is, my kingdom is not from here. And Pilate asked him, so you are a king? And Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate says, what is truth? So, Jesus came into the world to teach us about the kingdom of God, the patterns of life. And, and the number one pattern of life is to acknowledge the presence of God. Peter denied that right, to protect his own kingdom. And Jesus says, no, I came into the world to show you the kingdom, to share it, to give you the truth that God is here, God is near, God made all of this. This is what I'd like you to do today. I'd like you to find an opportunity where you are tempted to, to deny the reality of God. I'd like you to find that, that opportunity. Because in the regular patterns of your life, you are living in the kingdom of God. If you drive your car, that car is working by the patterns of the kingdom of God, right? If you give your spouse a hug, that's a pattern in the kingdom of God. If you reward somebody or punish them in an appropriate way, those were within patterns of the kingdom of God. You see the sunshine pattern of the kingdom of God. When are you tempted to step out of those patterns to create your own world? When are you tempted to deny the patterns that God has set before you? Now this is what I think you'll find. I think you'll find that generally you always live within the patterns of the kingdom of God. Just occasionally. You're tempted to break them. Look at that moment. See when it is. And then ask yourself, why did I seek to break the truth? So we're thinking about what we're praying about. You're in my prayers. I think about you. I love you. See you tomorrow. Peace upon your souls.